Hey guys, this is Pat from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, yes, the other day, so a couple days ago, I was turning something on my old uh, Powermatic 90, and the variable speed would just stay on slow. I was thinking, well, I guess the belt must be wore out or something's going on with this thing. So if you've got the same problem, I'll show you what it could be. I took this apart already and figured, figured all this out so you guys wouldn't have to go through all the head scratching and trying to figure out what I did to make this work. So one of the things you got to remove is this three quarter inch bolt on the back side that removes this plate. And this is all cast iron, so it's really heavy. This was back in the day when they made stuff real super heavy. And there's no plastic on this thing that I know about. This that cast iron cover on the headstock. I figured this belt was wore out because I use this lathe quite a bit. And I was pretty much thinking that this belt was wore out. My second thought was the lubrication and that was that was the problem. When I bought this lathe, I bought this at a school auction. I got this lathe and then I got a Rockwell Delta lathe and then I also got a WH planer. I think I got a video on all that, you know, kind of a show and tell type video on all these, but I got them for like $137.50 or something like that. Some ridiculously low price. I won the bid by like 50 cents or a dollar from another guy. <laughs> and I didn't even realize that I had the other, I got the other lay. The, the, they just said, this is yours too. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so I took all of them. Um, I redid the other, other lay that I painted it all up with some hammerite paint. But anyway, um, that's another story for another day. And, but anyway, so the variable speed handle comes off of the hex nut. And I'll tell you what size the hex nut or hex drive is 7.94 millimeters so obviously this is an American made so I'll go to fractions and that's good that's a 5 16 hex head in here and so the, I went ahead with this 5 16 Allen screw and all you have to do is remove this and you know make sure that your machine is unplugged because you don't want this thing coming on and getting your hand stuck in the uh, variable speed pulleys here. But that pops right out of there. Now, one thing, the first thing I noticed is the old grease in here is hard as a rock. And I just put this back together just to show you, but I need to clean all this up and re-grease this uh, mechanism here. So just to show you. Here's this large bolt, and then there's a spring, so make sure if you dump this upside down, you, you know that there's going to be a spring in there. So anyways, that goes just like that. And what I noticed is this thing was all, it was, everything was kind of getting real tight and seized up. There's a little bearing right here that just runs back and forth in, in, in back in here. And when you rotate the handle, that bearing runs along this surface and pushes and pushes the shaft and so when when you rotate the handle it goes up on this part of the change gear the hand wheel and this bearing rolls along this and as this gets bigger it pushes it spindle back or the drive back and then this opens and shuts and so let me show you the easiest way that I've found to take this off you pull that straight back like that with this out, with this off. And then you just pull it down from the bottom and rotate the pulley on the bottom. And that comes right off of there. And you pull this off the, this bottom spring portion and it comes right off. This portion here was pretty tight. So I just took some WD-40 and lubricated this up because the old lubricant in here it was um, it was getting to the point where it was it was starting to stick so this didn't want to flex out and in and that's very important that that float that that moves back and forth freely 
and likewise with this top shaft. Now what happens with this, this, this top portion on the headstock is when you rotate this hub or this handle, it, as it walks back and forth on this part right here, it physically pushes this back and forth along the head, head, headstock spindle. So when that's ro rotating around, this runs one way and this spring loader, this is tension down here, runs back and forth. It's similar to a clutch on a, some of your uh, go-karts. You know, when you hit the throttle, the faster the speed runs, or the, the faster, the more throttle you give on the go-kart, a centrifugal clutch will, will run back and forth, which will cause this to open and shut. It works similar to that, but it's not the same. This, this is variated because of the, this lobe right here varies in size. So at any rate, um, this was this was really sticky. It was really hard to move. So I, I had to get some lubricant. I just got WD-40 and I, I squirted it in here and just kind of worked this back and forth. I worked the one down there on the bottom back and forth. You can see how that works back and forth on that lobe. And so when you move that lobe the other way, the belt will automatically just try to pull back in to adjust. It'll just adjust to that lobe surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all that up. I got the shaft working nicely. I got this all lubricated. And I, and I did all this before you guys showed up. Now you can see this back in here. This spins the spindle shaft all the way over to the front of the machine. So we got this operating freely now. I'm going to go ahead and put the front back on here because it's a lot easier to line up this hole the uh, where the bolt goes through. There's a threaded hole right here. And we'll show you how that works. I'll put this all together. So when I put this together, there's a flat spot down here. And I will get that above this little arm. This little arm runs on this lobe. It's in the stop position right now. So when the micro switch is in the on position, or when it's depressed, it sends voltage to the motor. So I'll start on that vacant part portion of that lobe, and that's in the stop position lined up with the arrow right here. I want to be careful that I don't damage that in there, so I you see I raised up the handle and I place it over top of this flat portion right here and then I dropped it right down on top of that and you take your Allen Allen wrench and tighten that up so then you then you run this up to 4,000 RPM. Now with it in a stop position, this is where the placement of this pulley up here is going to be. When you run that to 4,000 RPM, so 4,000 lined up with the arrow, then you can push this part of the pulley back towards that part of the lathe. Then you can put the belt on and you'll have a lot of slack up here so you can run this down below the spring loaded portion and then just roll it real easily right onto that bottom pulley. Making sure you don't get your finger stuck in here obviously. So now, now the belt's on, you can turn this by hand, it's nice and slow, and run and run pressure on the handle. So what's what's happening is that belt is actually walking up in between those two halves of the pulley. I right, keep going. I keep going. Keep walking it slowly. I'm not applying too much pressure, just enough to uh, get it to move. Now it's in a stop position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in. I verified that this nut is tight. The belt is on securely. Ok, 
Okay, you'll see how these uh, operate here as I pick up speed. Now you can see the, the transfer of the width here going on with this pulley getting narrower and wider as it gets narrower the belt rides up higher on this pulley set and it gets smaller on the bottom pulley set so it, it picks up speed as this pulley gets smaller and that pulley gets larger. If you got one of these old lathes and it's not running so good for you, you might want to check the lubrication on it. Um, again, this this is the first time I've actually had that part of it open before because the lathe always just ran so great, and I never gave it a second thought. But just to show you guys, you know, to pull this thing off of here, it's not a big deal. Uh, a couple of little tricks you got to think about, and that's that's making sure that cam's all the way back so you can get that nut lined up in the throttle handle here. I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart and clean up that face and put some more grease on there and we'll be ready to turn some more material here. So hope you guys found this uh, video useful. <laughs> take care and God bless.